بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاۃ والسلام علی رسول الکریم very much everyone is familiar with one of the most famous person to live in this century his name is muhammad ali may allah have mercy on him and uh, <clears throat> he has uh, said many things many beautiful quotes are attributed to him and one of them is that the man who view the same way at the age of 50 as he or she did view the life <clears throat> at the age of 30 at the age of 20 has wasted 30 year of his life as much as this is true for as an individual it is more true for the community it is more true for a community which numbers now more than 7 million and for the last 50 years of our active presence in our country of course muslim been here for long time but since early 70s there is a big wave of immigrant muslims from around the globe from indonesia to africa from bangladesh to pakistan middle east from every part of the world but there was a mindset for quite some time of back home and that's what i'm talking about that it's not the individuals who have to change the way they think at the communities as well and that mindset of thinking and talking about back home as long as, as much as we love back home and we should help and we should continue to be connected with our brothers and sisters but this is a fact that we are here to stay we are not going anywhere this is our home now we are equal stakeholder equal citizen in this country and should fight for every big and small right what the constitution has given us for ourselves for our children as they say that home is not where you bury your parents and grandparents rather it's a place where you raise your children and grandchildren so this is our home and make no mistake about it we are not going anywhere within last <clears throat> 40 years we have come a long way we have established 3000 plus masajid 400 plus schools we have now good if not very strong good visible presence in political arena we have elected congressmen councillors mayors and one area where we did wonderful job that was relief international relief and that's the mindset i'm talking about that whenever we thought about poverty when we thought about needs we could easily connect to those places where we came from there was a lot of poverty lot of needs we spent our childhood over there and most of the relief efforts most of the charity work established in this country that was primarily geared for international relief be it tsunami in indonesia flood and earthquake in pakistan drought in somalia so on and so forth and alhamdulillah we did a good job and we should continue to do that but as i said earlier that now this is our home 
we have to seriously think about our work here. And there's a bitter reality that <clears throat> either due to the foolish act of some individuals in the name of Islam or a very <clears throat> venomous agenda of very few people who have a political agenda, who have hatred against Islam and perception developed around us because we did not do our work and whenever there is a vacuum that is filled and that is filled we like it or not with lot of hatred, lot of misperception, lot of dislike about our community, about Muslims, about Islam. And we are being portrayed as a burden, as a liability. It has come to this point that our very existence is being threatened. What we saw in New Zealand, and we will hear more about it, is what, it is just a symptom of the mindset that the how media, how certain individuals and groups and parties for their political purposes has made the Muslims as a scapegoat and has spread so much venom ag against us around the world and particularly in this country. That what happened in New Zealand and what we experience here, even what, what people were demonstrating outside today, across this hall, these are just the symptoms, but the problem is much bigger. Rather than complaining and explaining, we have to step up and do the right thing. By closing our eyes, problem is not going to go away. And by just mere complaining, that Fox News or Sean Hannity or media or even the president, they are using us as scapegoat. Complaints are complaints, they don't solve any problem. We have to reach out to our fellow citizens, our fellow neighbors, and good news is that the majority of the people around us, a great majority of the people around us, even those who might, under the influence of media, under the influence of this hatred and propaganda against the Muslims, may be misguided, but majority of the people around us are good-hearted people, fair-minded people. And when they see the good work, when they see the good efforts of the Muslim community, they do respond positively. So this is a good news, this is the reality, and we need to take benefit of that before it's too late. To change that perception, it's not the beautiful buildings. MashaAllah, we have 3,000 massages and many of them very big, beautiful buildings our schools, or our personal success, that we are very successful doctors, businessmen, engineers, IT people, so on and so forth. Neither is the big gathering, neither is the fancy reports and tall claims. Rather, it's our work on the ground that how a common person is benefiting from our work. How a cab driver, how a barber, how a waiter in the restaurant, how a housekeeper in the hotel, they perceive us, they see us, and more importantly, 
how a person at the time of need, a person who is afflicted with a calamity, a person who lives in the tornado zone, in the flood zone, in the flood area, and he needs some help. How he see Muslims responding? A person who is hungry, does that person think of Muslims? Is there any Muslim food bank? Is there any Muslim food pantry which can help? A person who needs shelter, does he think about us when there's a need for shelter? Yeah, there's a Muslim shelter. If this is happening, if we are reaching to the common person and common person is thinking that, yes, at the time of need, there are some Muslims, individuals and organizations, there are some institutions where I can find some help, then we'll see the true change. Then we'll see that this perception is changing truly and genuinely. And we don't have to make effort to change this perception out of fear because there's a lot of propaganda against us. Rather, we have to do it because this is very fundamental teaching of our deen. This is what we are taught. This is what Prophet has told us, that Muslims, wherever they are, they are beneficial to the humanity. They are a benefit to the society. They are beneficial. They are not liability. Rather, they are an asset. Khairun Nasim, best among the people. Another variation, Habbun Nasil Allah, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are those among the children of Adam, those who are most beneficial to the others? These are the teachings of our Prophet So if following those teachings, we are able to reach out to the community, then definitely we are going to change that perception. Few years ago, we opened a clinic, Iknalif USA opened a clinic in Oklahoma City. I just want to relate that how in practical life, in real life, these things, what I said earlier, how we apply them. In Oklahoma City, I came to know at that time that there are more than 150 Muslim physicians. And in the opening session, in the opening, uh, uh, grand opening of that clinic, it's a small clinic, annual cost is less than 100,000, between 70 and 90,000. And one of the doctors, his comments, they still, I, like, <clears throat> I keep refreshing them and reminding myself, and uh, they always, fresh in my mind, and wherever I go, I share that. He said that we are a very strong community over here. He is the one who told me that there are more than 150 physicians, Muslim physicians in the greater Oklahoma City. And in that uh, meeting, in that grand opening, I have to give a keynote address. <clears throat> there was congressman, I think his name is John Jung, congressman from either is a state senator or a congressman from that district. The president of the largest hospital in Oklahoma, several councilmen, mayors of smaller town, towns, and a lot of other people were there. And one of the doctors, he said that we have given millions, not hundred, thousands, millions in donations at different time to different politicians different groups, different hospitals, but as a community, we never felt that kind of grace, that kind of respect, what we have today, by just spending 70, 80,000 dollars, because today we opened the first Muslim clinic, a professional clinic with the Muslim identity. And now congressman is here. We were giving more as charity or whatever, uh, forced charity or, uh, benefit dinners of the politicians is one and the same thing. So they were giving millions in forced charity to these different uh, dinners of, of the mayors and the congressmen and the con uh, councilmen. But he said that now we feel respected. They came to us, they listened to us. 
and we have respect as a community. So it's not one free clinic. It puts you the, this small clinic can put you on the map of, in, and make you a member of the fraternity of all clinics in the greater Oklahoma City. It's not one shelter home, women's shelter home in Boston. Rather, it makes you a full voting member, equal member of the fraternity of other 50 or 60 or 100 shelter homes. Now you are there as an equal. It's not one food pantry in Virginia. Now, all the other food pantries, professional food pantries affiliated with the food banks, you are there to talk and speak as an equal. So this is what needs to be done. And it's not only in Oklahoma City or in Boston or in Virginia or in Maryland. In every town where there's a masjid, where there's a Muslim community, we have to have these services. That when somebody is in need of food, the first thing they think of, the first people he or she think of is the Muslim community. If somebody need a shelter, as I said earlier, the first person, the first people come into mind, yeah, I can go to the local masjid and I may be able to find some help. If there's a disaster, if there's a flood, if there's a tornado, people need some help, they see young Muslims, your children, my children, children from MSAs, from different masajids, with the logo of Muslim for Humanity. It's not about Ikna relief. It's for them to be proud Muslims who are challenged every day, who are tortured in their schools and in colleges, even second grade and third grade, bullied. They are taunted that you are terrorists. You are not loyal to this country. You are not giving nothing to this country. That child can tell no. Yesterday, I was distributing food in downtown. I was volunteering in back, back to school giveaway campaign. I was there in North Carolina. I traveled to North Carolina when there was a flood and Ikna Leaf responded. And then the change would come. Definitely, this will make, bring a change in the life of those people who are in need. Definitely, it will give us great reward on the day of judgment, reward of helping a poor and a widow and an orphan, which from many a hadith we know that it's like praying day and night. A person who make run around, person who make effort for a widow or a needy person or an orphan, his or her reward is like a person who is making Kiamul Lail every night. His or her reward is like who is fasting around the year, not only in Ramzan. That reward is there. And then the change in the life of person is there. But most importantly, when we do it over here in professional manner, in organized manner, this will be the great work of Dawah. This will connect people with Islam. That perception will change that Muslims are a liability, they are a burden. Then people will say, no, we saw them helping. I share you a small story, very beautiful story, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. We know about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that even before the revelation came to him, his life, we know that famous story which came to us on the way of our mother Khadija Anha. That how his life was, how his introduction was in the society. When he came home, he described the whole incident. And she said that Allah will not fail you. Allah will not abandon you. She said all that. And we know that anything said or approved by Prophet after revelation is from Hadith, is from Sunnah, must be taken very seriously. And those words must be taken very seriously that Allah will not fail you, He will not abandon you, He will not waste you. The first part is very beautiful. Because you are doing 
this, you are taking care of your kith and kins who are left behind, those who cannot carry their load, those who are afflicted with the calamity, those travelers who don't have any means you are providing for them. So Allah will not abandon you. That's the way Prophet ﷺ was known before he started delivering the first verse of the Quran. That was grand plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish the personality of Prophet ﷺ before Dawa starts as a person who can be trusted, as a person who is a person of kindness and mercy and generosity. But uh, other than Prophet ﷺ, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, and I'm telling this story for a reason, he as an individual, he was a good friend of Prophet ﷺ even before Islam, he was very wealthy, and as an individual like Prophet ﷺ, he was also very kind and spending upon the poor and needy people. Now Sayyid <clears throat> Abu Bakr belongs to one of the smallest tribe among the Quraysh, one of the weakest tribe among the Quraysh. Prophet ﷺ, he belongs to the Banu Hashim, he is one of the very respected, powerful, and strong tribe. And it's not easy to touch Prophet ﷺ, even by those standards. But Sayyidina Abu Bakr, because he did not have much support, so he was very badly beaten in Kaaba. And he has built a small place for worship close to his home. Time and again, time and again, he was tortured most in the earlier time, because he did not have much support. So one day he decided to leave. And while he was leaving on the outskirts of Makkah, one of other crash chief, he met him and he said, Ya Ibn Abi Kahafa, that's the way he was known, where you are leaving? He said, you know that probably his name is uh, it's a Banu Tamim, uh, Sayyid Abu Bakr's tribe name, but my tribe is very small, very weak, and cannot help me much, and uh, people are torturing me for my deen. He knew, that chief knew, he was not Muslim, he was also among the enemies, but he knew Abu Bakr anhu, as a person, good person. He said, no, a good person like you cannot leave Makkah. He brought him back with him, and as was the tradition, he came to Kaaba. He made an announcement that from now onward, Abu Bakr is under my protection and under the protection of my tribe. Anybody who come to him, he has to come on our dead bodies. That was the tradition, and nobody dared to touch Abu Bakr. Of course, Sayyidina Abu Bakr, he wanted to pray openly, and he wanted to spread this message, but there were some conditions that he will not spread his message, but the over here, but we learn from this that when you do the good work, perception would change. People would stand up. If there are few people over here demonstrating against us, there will be a lot more people demonstrating against them, standing up for Muslims. And we saw that last year in one of the conventions that there were few people talking against the Muslims and hundreds of people showed up in support of Muslims. And that will change to better and better, inshallah. And last point, that by having these activities in very professional and organized manners. Ikna Relief now, Alhamdulillah, is <clears throat> very well established, well known. I don't have to say much. It's not, as I said, that it's not our tar reports and claims, but we have to publish beautiful reports. They are also needed sometimes, but it's a work which it speaks. Alhamdulillah, Ikna Relief, now in every major city, we have 17 shelter home for women. We have 33 food pantries serving more than 25,000 people, not every year, every month. We have seven free clinics, four mobile clinics. 
Every disaster since Hurricane Katrina, brother mentioned every major disaster and 57 of them, one of the first people to show up over there after the security clearances. First, one of the first organizations to show up over there, it was the Volunteers of Ikna Relief. Refugee empowerment centers, 11 refugee empowerment centers. Unfortunately, for the last 30, 35 years, a large, large number of refugees are from Muslim countries, from Afghanistan, from Yemen, Syria, Somalia, and lately, Burma, Rohingya. Even over here, there are hundreds of thousands of Muslim refugees who are, their children are abandoning them. They have to extend their hand to different churches and other places of worship. Children are abandoning them, abandoning the deen. They need help right over here around our neighborhoods. Ikna Leaf is taking care of, trying to take care of them. We have 11 refugee empowerment centers and serve more than 3,000 refugee families every month. But most important point where I want to conclude that Ikna Leaf is providing a platform for our youth to go to a good college, to have a good scholarship, Children need to have community service. And Ikna Leaf has provided this great, great platform that where Muslims, and even many cases non-Muslims, they come, they want to volunteer with us, they wear Ikna Leaf t-shirt, and they become your dai. When somebody is having Muslim for Humanity logo, and going serving people, he is making dawa for you. He is changing perception for you. And they, our children, college students, and other professionals who volunteer, they can get the same credit what they get by working with Red Cross or any other organization. And at the same time, they be connected with the deen. They will be connected very proudly with the Islamic work, with the Islamic identity, and getting all the benefits of their social work. So, in conclusion, that relief work in this country and relief work for Ikna Leaf USA is not just helping the poor and the needy, which is fundamental part of our deen and we have to do it. But our perception, our understanding should be beyond that, that it is, those rewards are there, but this organized effort is a way of establishing Islamic identity in this country and changing the perception in this country. May Allah bless you all, bless your communities, and wherever you go, don't have to be necessarily with Ikna Leaf, but you have to be engaged in this work. Be part of these efforts in any way and fashion you can be. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.